Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name, back at it again with another Giants video. Update time, Monday we got two signings to cover. Corey Coleman earlier in the day and then a little later after Corey Coleman, Giants picked up Dion Lewis from the Tennessee Titans. Two very good depth moves. I definitely like the Lewis pickup a lot more than the Coleman pickup, uh, but let me get into Coleman first and foremost. So, a couple years ago when the Giants initially picked up Corey Coleman, you know, after the uh, midway point of the 2018 season, he came on and he had a really good impact with the Giants. His instant impact was felt more so in the special teams game than it was in the actual wide receiver game. You know, for that year, he led the Giants in kickoff returns with 23 of them for 598 yards, averaging 26 yards per kickoff return and the longest one he had was 51 uh, yards. Now there was even a like a four game stretch, maybe a three or four game stretch where Coleman like led the league in uh, yardage per kickoff returns and whatnot. And he was just absolutely insane. He was one of the reasons along with a Michael Thomas who, you know, I believe 2018 was his Pro Bowl year. Those guys were, you know, the main reason the special teams for the Giants were was honestly the best part of the Giants, you know, all of the three parts of the team. And they, they were the reason the special teams were out there and actually keeping us in a lot of these games, you know. The kick return game, Michael Thomas and, you know, kick and punt coverage and whatnot. These, guys, these were the guys that made the special teams, you know, the best part of the Giants team a couple years ago. Now, Coleman did show flashes as a receiver whenever he was given the chance, but that's the thing. He wasn't really given that many chances during 2018 season. He only uh, had, at least for the Giants, five receptions for 71 yards, which is like not that good, but it's because he didn't really have that many balls thrown his way. He only played in uh, like one game for us. He started one game as a receiver and any other game he was used as a receiver, not that much. Uh, so that leads me to believe, you know, this is, um, even though he doesn't really have a connection with Joe Judge, I would say this is more so of a, a Judge re-signing as of course, like 99% of his resume is being a special teams coach, special teams coordinator, whether it was with the Patriots or whether it was at the college level, at, uh, Nick Saban in Alabama, whatever the case is, Corey Coleman was the best kick returner we've had in the past couple of years, you know, even though it's only been for like half of a year. And last year, the Giants special teams, while it was good, you know, they, in fact, you know, they were above average. They were they were better than good, but they weren't great. The one thing they were really missing was an electric kick returner, and that was Corey Coleman. And I think that's why Judge is bringing him back. We need that guy there. You know, we have guys like Thomas for coverage. We have Cody Core for punt coverage and maybe punt returns. But I think Coleman is going to come on, and he's going to be a feature on the special teams. I don't think this is wide receiver depth at all. And this is leading me to believe that... Um, we're gonna take a wide receiver sometime in the draft, maybe the mid rounds, maybe third, fourth round, who knows. But I think we're gonna take a wide receiver in the draft because the depth, you know, the depth is not really there right now. And there's certainly an argument to be made that maybe we don't have a number one wide receiver. Of course, in my opinion, the starting guys that we have, you know, they're good enough, you know, for a starting role, but we definitely need people behind them because every year, you know, Giants wide receivers just go down like flies. It seems like the injury bug never leaves them. Uh, Shepard, as I've said before, is very worrying with him with his concussions. We don't know how Tate is going to perform. Maybe he regresses, maybe he doesn't. Uh, Darius Slayton is really the only safe wide receiver we have right now. You know, knock on wood, hopefully he stays healthy and he continues to progress well. But we definitely need somebody else there, whether it's for depth or, as some people think, to be a number one. Now, on to Deion Lewis. This was a signing I liked a lot more than the Corey Coleman one because we finally addressed the backup running back position. Deion Lewis automatically comes in, you know, he comes in and he's automatically the second best running back on the team. He is a, you know, let's say like a year ago before, you know, before he signed with Tennessee, and you know, that first year he was with Tennessee, because I believe he spent two years with them, that in 2017, 2018, he was a starting caliber running back, he was. Now he is older, I think he's like around 30 years old or something like that, whatever the case is, or he's gonna be 30, he's still really good. And the way New England used him was, you know, blew everybody's mind because him coming into the league, I think he was like a fifth round pick for the Eagles or something. Nobody really expected him to be that starting caliber back. You know, with the Eagles, the most yards he ever got for them was 102. Then New England picked him up. And in 2017, which was his best year, they got him 896 rushing yards. 
paired up with like 214 receiving yards for a total of around like 1100 yards that year or something like that whatever the case is Dion Lewis is somebody nice to have back there and this is a better pickup and I wouldn't have thought this beforehand uh, it's a better pickup than getting a bruiser back through free agency or the draft that's not to say that we don't do that we definitely could say like in the sixth or seventh rounds get just a really big running back to run through the tackles or whatnot but I really don't think we're gonna do that anymore but this is a better pickup than that because Dion Lewis does what Saquon does he can catch the ball He's more of an agile back than he is a power back. Uh, and he runs outside a lot. You know, he can run through tackles, but he runs outside a lot. And he mostly, you know, he's mostly kind of a receiving back. Obviously that, you know, those 896 rushing yards shows that he could actually run through the tackles. But Lewis, because he's so similar in makeup to a Saquon, tells me that he's not going to be somebody that comes in only on third downs. He's not going to be somebody that we only see they bring in to get the, the short yards and whatnot. He's gonna be somebody that they bring in for maybe an entire drive, you know, maybe all three, all four downs. We're gonna see a lot of Deion Lewis, you know, in this coming year, I believe. And it's, you know, just gonna help in the long term for prolonging Saquon's career, taking a lot of the load off of him versus if we had a bruiser back that we only brought in for short yardage or third down situations. I think we're gonna see a lot of Deion Lewis. And uh, another thing that points to that, other than the fact, you know, just how he was used in New England, just you know the type of back he is is that a report out here which talked about Lewis signing with the Giants he was actually you know deciding which teams to go with of course one of the teams he really thought about was Tampa Bay to be reunited with Brady and whatnot and this is what they had to say about Lewis coming to the Giants according to CBS Sports they say that Judge who served as the Patriots special teams coordinator during Lewis's previous three-year run in New England was a factor in the reunion as was the presence of other expats coaches like Jerry Saplinski. It was not, however, the driving factor in luring Lewis from other teams per a source, and this is quote, it was more about the fit and a role in the offense. The former Pittsburgh product getting to move closer to his home in Albany, New York was also an added bonus. So the role in the offense, that tells me that if he was going to Tampa Bay, they probably only, you know, plan to use him as a gadget back like literally just to come in on you know plays every now and then maybe second downs not so much you know actually being involved in the offense so it tells me that the Giants plan to use him more than just you know as a typical running back we might have a two you know a two-headed monster this coming year where Saquon sees like 70% of the snaps and Deion sees 30% maybe 60-40 I don't think it's going to be 50-50 at the most I think it's going to be 60-40 but Deion Lewis is going to see a lot more of the field than a typical backup running back will and it's because of what he can do and how similar it is to a Saquon and of course we know Jason Garrett loves to use more than one running backs he's known for you know using his run game and being you know a master at the run game being a master at multiple running back sets and whatnot so that's another added factor to it as Garrett is our offensive coordinator but I really like the Lewis pickup. He's a veteran. He knows how to play the game. You know, he, he knows the ins and outs of the running back position. He has, he has a lot he can teach to Barkley if Barkley has anything really left to learn and whatnot. And it's really a New England type pickup that brings a little bit more of that uh, hardworking culture over to the Giants. So I really like it for that reason. I think that we're going to get a wide receiver in the draft. And yeah, that's, that's really my thoughts on it. Let me know what you guys think down below. I'm out. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Yer.